I've literally said I'm going to all of these things. This weekend is going to kill me. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my Stagey YouTube channel. If you are seeing my face for the first time, hello! My name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I'm an independent theatre critic and a content creator based here in the UK. And this is my YouTube channel where I review shows that I have been to see over here and I talk about news and drama and stagey things happening worldwide. And today, that means I get to tell you all about Musical Con. Now, New York-based theatre fans have had Broadway Con for a few years now, but Musical Con is finally happening here in London. This is the first fan convention of its kind for musical theatre fans here in the UK. I am so, so excited this is happening at the end of the month, and we're going to talk about it today because they have just announced what is going to be happening. There was a little bit of anticipation, by which I mean a lot of anticipation, because people weren't really sure, having bought tickets, what this was going to involve. They have now announced there are so many things that are going to be happening. I'm so excited to tell you all about musical con. So stay tuned, we're going to talk about it. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you're subscribed to my stage YouTube channel for plenty more content just like this that I make very, very regularly. Also go find me on all the other social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok now, giving you theatre news on a daily basis, at Mickey Joe Theatre on all of those. Now let's talk about musical con, baby! So the first thing I'm very excited to exclusively tell you is that I will be at Musical Con this year. I'm going to be there on both days. My lovely boyfriend Aaron will be there with me as well. We're both so excited to be attending. We are both massive musical theatre fans, as you know. And I'm so excited to meet loads of people, to see everything that's going on, and just have a great stagey weekend. I honestly cannot tell you how much I am looking forward to it. Also, I'm really hoping that means I get to meet lots of you. I have had the joy of meeting lots of subscribers to this channel when I've been at the theatre and more recently traveling around to different theatres in different parts of the country. But hopefully a whole bunch of you are going to be at Musical Con and you get to come and say hey. So if you see me at Musical Con, which you will if you're there because I'm going to be everywhere over that weekend, make sure you come and say oh my god hey. And I may have a little special something that I can give away to people who do. So we will see. We'll see. Maybe it's not confirmed yet, but we'll see. Also, I will definitely be making vlog content over that weekend. The only question is how many vlogs am I going to make? Is it going to be one for each day? Is it going to be one long video of the whole weekend? I'm not sure, but hopefully I get to chat to some of the musical theatre stars and performers who are there. Hopefully I get to chat to a bunch of fans and cosplayers. I want a broad perspective of musical con, so I'm going to be doing a lot of filming. But enough about me. Let me tell you everything else that's going to be happening at musical con. So basically we have a few different categories of different types of events that will be taking place. You have the main stage where there'll be various performances. I'll tell you more about those in a minute. You have the backstage for different panels talking about sort of behind the scenes theatre aspects and creative processes. You've got your workshops and masterclasses. This is people who want to practice their singing and dancing and performing with West End performers. You've got your stage door experiences. This is for a chance to meet, have a photo, get a signature from a musical theatre performer that you really admire. There's also fan meets, which is areas in which fans of particular shows are able to go and meet up and share their love of that show and maybe create lifelong friendships. Whoever knows. There's a theatre land area with different exhibitors and brands and businesses and all sorts of different people. I'm going to be telling you exactly who is going to be there in just a minute, but that's really exciting to me as well. If you've been to any other kind of conventions before, that's kind of like your general market hall with the different stalls. And there's also a few competitions that will be happening over the weekend at Musical Con. Stay tuned, we're going to talk about all of these different things because there is just so much to get through. So I mentioned the main stage. Let me tell you what's going to be happening on the main stage at Musical Con. So on the Saturday, we have an opening ceremony performance. Then we're going to have a spotlight on Heather's The Musical for 45 minutes, which is very exciting. Longer than a West End live set. Let me tell you, this is extended features. There's then a special performance from But I'm a Cheerleader. So I guess that's the Paul Taylor Mills hour from 11 till 12. He's giving you three quarters Heather's little snippet of Cheerleader at the end. Sensible. Next is a preview of a new musical called Super You. I love that even in something that's celebrating like existing shows and the really popular ones, we're still featuring new musicals. It's really great to acknowledge that alongside these other things. Then Sondheim and Me, a performance from Jenna Russell and an interview. I love Jenna Russell. I love Sondheim. As we all know, I will definitely be making sure I catch that. 
Next on the main stage is going to be Defying Gravity, a celebration of going green. This is a panel and a performance. You can assume there are going to be alphabas involved. This is definitely all things Wicked. Again, this is going to be a very popular moment on stage because who doesn't love a bit of Wicked? Come on, everybody there is going to want to see this panel. Next, we have a preview from Get Up Stand Up being featured on the main stage. Great to see them getting involved. And then finally, closing out with a show off. Everybody's talking about Jamie versus Legally Blonde. This is kind of like a game show quiz moment between the casts of Legally Blonde and everybody's talking about Jamie. Now I'm assuming it's the Regent's Park Legally Blonde cast because a lot of them are going to be at this event and not like Legally Blonde from way back in the day at the Savoy. The question is, which team is Courtney Bowman going to play for? Because she's original Jamie cast, but it was also Regent's Park L. So you know, conflict of interest there, methinks. So that was all Saturday main stage performances. On the Sunday, we begin with an hour celebrating 50 years of Cameron Mackintosh shows. Expect Phantom, expect Les Mis, expect Mary Poppins, expect them all coming together. We've seen this on West End Live. We kind of know the performance that they're going to do. Next, there is a performance from Back to the Future, the musical. Really excited. I haven't been to see the new cast yet. This might be the first time I see some of them performing this show. After that is then a performance from Seven or Sven which is the original cast of six, the first six queens, plus Grace, who understudied all those roles. They have formed a pop girl supergroup called Seven, because who needs vowels, honestly, in this day and age? I have never seen them perform. I've seen them all in six so many times, and in other shows, but I've never seen them as Seven, so I'm excited for that, I am. And then a cast reunion from In the Heights. It's only half an hour long, so I want to know if they are singing or if they're just like hugging for 30 solid minutes. But Emma Kingston did put on her story a little while ago that she would be at Musical Con taking part in a very special reunion. So we know she is gonna be there. I instantly thought, is it in the Heights? Cause she was part of the original Southwark Playhouse cast pre King's Cross. So hopefully we get to see loads of people. Listen, so many of the performers that you love now were in in the Heights back in the day. It was one of those shows that like everyone went on to be huge from that. Victoria Hamilton Barrett was in that and Christina Modestu and Sam McKay and gosh, so many people, Damien Bahajia and and Cleve September and Amy Atkinson and Genesis Linnea and honestly so many people, I'm forgetting dozens of them, but a stacked cast. Nathan Amsey was another one. David Bedella, Josie Benson. I could keep going, I shan't. And at 3 p.m. a surprise cast reunion. Who could that be? Now I am willing to look through all the performers who are attending and work out who is being reunited and what kind of cast here. Cause like, I'm assuming it's not something super recent unless they're reuniting like the original cast of Heathers, which would be nice and nostalgic. We haven't really seen them together, but I'm very curious as to what cast they could be reuniting on the musical con stage based on the performers who are going to be there. Speculate down in the comments, who do you think we're going to see? Next is an hour from And Juliet, and it's a spotlight on And Juliet making a new musical. So assumedly we're gonna get a bit of a performance, but also some insight into the process of putting a completely new show together. That's kind of bittersweet with the announcement that Anne Juliet is gonna be closing in the West End, but nice for them to have that moment and have a chance for the fans to celebrate them. That's really sweet. And then a closing ceremony in the last half hour, which I'm hoping will be very theatrical and show-stopping. So that is just everything that's happening on the main stage. That alone is an enormous amount of content that you don't have to pay any kind of additional price for on top of your ticket price. So I'm really excited about that and I'm pleased about that. Let me quickly run you through the backstage panels that are going to be happening. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. There's so much. Here we go. So on the Saturday, there is a behind the scenes talk, which is assumedly about costuming, which this, oh, I'm going to be interested in all of these. This is going to kill me because I can't be at everything. And I just know I'm going to want to go to all of these panels because I'm so fascinated by these creative things. Then at 11 o'clock, why representation matters in all areas of musical theatre. Oh my God. Gosh, not only do I want to go to that panel, I want to be on that panel. Oh, I'm not on any panels, by the way. I've not been asked to be on any panels, which is fine because I would be freaking out and, and panicking and I'm quite happy to just be watching, don't you worry. Then everybody's talking about Jamie from stage to screen with director Jonathan Butterell. I'm so interested in the adaptation process from stage to screen. Oh my God, this is gonna kill me. And the next one, this is my favorite so far at one o'clock, Disney puppetry on the West End, a talk and demonstration. You don't even know how much I love puppets. I went through a massive puppet phase when I was younger. And as we know, I am a Disney person. So 
That one's got me instantly. At two o'clock, moving a musical. Now I assume that that is about movement and choreography, maybe from some leading choreographers, rather than about taking a musical that's in one theater and, and putting it somewhere else. And it's not a talk from like lorry companies. Oh, interesting. At three o'clock, the creation of Footballers Wives, the musical concept album show preview. Interesting. Preview of a new musical theater show. I love any chance to preview new musicals, so maybe I'll be there. I've literally said I'm going to all of these things. This weekend is going to kill me. Can I be like Hermione with the time turner? That's what I need, but in a trans inclusive way. And then at four o'clock, writing a hit musical with Toby Marlowe. I love the, the, the BD energy of that to just be like, yeah, I'm gonna do a panel about writing a hit musical because that's what I do. I write hit musicals. Good for you, Toby Marlowe. Then on the Sunday, we have more backstage content. I'm scrolling again. Here it is at 10 a.m. The alternate and swing superstars of the West End. Yes, love that they're getting their own panel. Surviving an eight show week, vocal maintenance with the West End's top team. It's very useful to up and coming performers. That's a great one to go to. If you're in drama school, go to that panel because I'm seeing so many great graduate performers struggling with the intensity of a West End vocal schedule. So I think this is really important. At 12 o'clock, Black Lives Matter West End. And if we're talking about important, my gosh, what a brilliant thing for them to be platforming in an event like this. Because you could so easily just make it like fun and frothy and for them to be like having this kind of diversity of lineup and different things they're talking about and talking about Black Lives Matter in this public forum, I think that that is fantastic. And then, oh gosh, more of the same, destigmatizing mental health on the West End. Love that this is a thing that's being talked about. At 2.15, Westerberg yearbook panel. I'm assuming this is just some people who have been in Heathers. It kind of seems just like a placeholder for something Heathersy. Not super clear what it's going to be. Like different Heathers casts over the years. That would be interesting because I feel like it's really evolved as a show and being in that show means something really different now. So I'm interested in that. Then at three o'clock, there's a Hamill fans panel. Are they called Hamill fans? Is that what you call Hamilton fans? Because I hate that. Surely you can do something with like Fanelton. Instantly that feels better to me. And then LBGTQIA plus on the West End. And I don't think everyone who actually is would possibly fit on that panel. So I'm assuming it is a small selection. And that's what's happening with the backstage content. So again, so, so much for you to choose from. I cannot begin to tell you how I'm going to narrow down my options. Let's talk about people that you can meet. So this is the stage door zone. Now I haven't looked into pricing for this because I'm probably just not gonna have time in my weekend to actually go and meet anyone, but I do think that there are additional prices for this, which, you know, I have mixed feelings about because admission already costs and it is a very difficult time for everyone in this country. And a lot of the people who want to go to this are going to be teenagers and younger people who don't have their own income. So I would hate to think of anyone being priced out of an experience like this. But at the same time, if you look at these fan conventions like sci-fi conventions and Doctor Who conventions, this is pretty standard and these prices seem pretty standard. I also think for everyone who is saying, oh, I can just get it at the stage door, an actor does not owe you a stage door experience and they're not being paid for their time. They're not being compensated for that time. They finished work. They may want to go home. A lot of actors are very happy to meet fans at stage door, but we can't take it for granted. It's never included in the ticket price. It is not obligatory and assumed that it's a guarantee. So I like this a lot better than that kind of an experience. So we have Louise Dearman first, then Courtney Bowman, then Alice Fern, Toby Marlowe, Shanae Holmes, Leighton Williams, Michael Duke, Ben Forster, Courtney Bowman again, Alice Fern again, Jenna Russell. Oh, do I want to go meet Jenna Russell? No, I can't. I have no time. Luke Bayer, Jenna Russell again, and then Louise Dearman and Ben Forster again. Then on the Sunday... Let's find out. We have Hannah Lowther. Love that for her. Amy Atkinson, Sophie Isaacs, Trevor Dion Nicholas. Seven. All of them. My gosh. John Robbins. Lauren Byrne later in the day. The In the Heights cast reunion. Ah. Oh. Cassidy Jansen, Carl Queensborough, Adam Garcia. I can talk to him about seeing him in Wicked when I was 11. David Bedella. So many exciting people. Oh my goodness. <laughs> seems like a good time to talk about the performance workshops that you can do. So there are three different studios. There's the Sondheim studio, the Weber studio, and the Larson studio, named after three 
very influential musical theatre composers. Andrew Webber, Stephen Sondheim, Jonathan Larson. I don't know that that necessarily has any kind of a connection to the content of those studios. I think it's just three cute names to give them. So Lauren Drew is going to be teaching you how to do Whipped Into Shape, after which point you're going to need to go home or call a medic because I've seen that choreography and it's ridiculous. You're going to need to train before that one. Daniel Bailey is doing Exodus from Get Up Stand Up. Again, I love the diversity between shows. I love that everything is on offer. Idris Cargbo is giving you a Lion King workshop. Jamie Tate, Dancing in the Street. Vanessa Fisher is doing a Legally Blonde inspired workshop. That sounds fun. Layton's doing an Everybody's Talking About Jamie workshop. That's in connection with his company, Pros from the Shows. And Sinead Long is going to do a My Shot workshop from Hamilton. So those were all in the Sondheim studio. On the Saturday in the Larson studio, Colette Chittart, whose name I'm sure I always mispronounce. She's doing Problem from And Juliet. Tom Jackson Greaves is doing a Rent workshop. That's exciting. Tom Scanlon's doing Big Fun from Heathers. Bobby Little is doing Shut Up Heather. It says Shut Up Heather here. It says Heathers inspired. I'm assuming it's Never Shut Up Again because that was her number in the show when she was Heather Duke. Isaac Hesketh is doing an Oh My God You Guys workshop. And Shaka McFarlane is doing I Don't Need Your Love from Six great options. I don't know if some of these are vocal or dance necessarily, but I assume when you've been on to book them that they're more specific on there because this is just kind of a brief overview of what's happening. In the Weber room, Luke Bayer is giving an acting through song masterclass. There's a star of musical con competition. Courtney Bowman is giving a Legally Blonde inspired masterclass. And then Louise Dearman and Alice Fern are doing masterclasses as well. I mean, those are going to be very, very special because look at the performers that you will be learning from. Day two, I'm just going to tell you about the ones that are different to day one. Jodie Steele, Corn Nuts versus Howard's, Heathers and Six. Wow. Charlie Stemp is doing a step in time workshop. Oh, if I could dance, I'd be there. Leighton is then going to do a hairspray inspired workshop on day two. Sophie Isaacs is going to do a Heathers workshop. Miriam Teak Lee now doing an Anne Juliet workshop. Alex Sarmiento doing a Hamilton inspired workshop. She is very big in choreography these days but before she was in Hamilton, was in In the Heights. So again, another person who will be at that In the Heights reunion. Erica Jane doing a Jellicle Cats workshop. Janair Richard Knoll doing a Seven workshop. Tom Scanlon doing Kinky Boots, Sex is in the Heel. Adam Garcia, MX Masterclass. John McRae doing an Everybody's Talking About Jamie workshop. Oh my gosh, John McRae coming back and doing some Jamie content. That's a big deal. Hannah Lowther doing an MT TikTok dance workshop. I bet that's going to be popular. Come on now. Billy Luke Nevers doing a Legally Blonde remixed workshop. Natalie Mae Paris doing some acting through song. Emma Kingston, Iconic Roles Masterclass. Hello. Heba El Sheik is doing a Jamie inspired vocal masterclass. Lauren Byrne doing acting through song. Nikki Bentley, a Defying Gravity specific masterclass. This is what the people need. And then one that simply says, Singing Through a Straw can make you an awesome singer. Very intrigued as to who that is. I already know what they're going to be talking about. I'm familiar with this, but I'm not entirely sure who's going to be telling you. So lots of workshops, lots of content going on. In and amongst all of this as well, you also have fan zones. At 11 a.m. you have the fan zone for the recently deceased, which is Beetlejuice fans, if you hadn't picked up on that. There's a Queendom fan meet. Then at 1 p.m., at 2 p.m., a Rent Heads fan meet, a Hamill fan meet at 3 p.m. I'm still not happy with that name. And a generic fan meet listed here at 4 p.m. Are you all still with me? This has been an awful lot. On the second day in the fan zone, Corn Nuts, of course, we can't forget the Heathers fans, at 10.15, a Jellicle Ball fan meet. Guys, do I go dressed as a cat and go to the Jellicle Ball fan meet? It's not beneath me. If there was one I was going to, this would be it. Okay, then a generic fan meet at midday. A this is for the fans phantom meet where they can commiserate and cry about the Broadway closure, presumably. And then a Fansons fan meet on the Sunday. I don't know if anyone's thought this through because Dear Evan Hansen is closing in the West End on the Saturday night. They're doing a fan meet on the Sunday. That feels like chaos to me. But that's some of the other stuff that's going on. Now, I promised I would tell you about these competitions that are going to be happening. Apologies for looking at my phone so much, but there is just so much to read throughout this. I could not possibly memorize all of this content, even if I wanted to. So there are three competitions happening over the Musical Con weekend. There is a cosplay competition, a star of Musical Con competition, that's singing and dancing, and a lip sync battle. All three of those are very exciting and best of luck to everyone. All of the competition entry is now closed, so people are presumably getting themselves ready, whether that's limbering up or sewing things onto outfits, but wishing you all the best of luck. And the last 
last thing I want to tell you about is all of the different exhibitors who are going to be there. Now we have a whole range of things. We have some drama schools, we have some performance based things, we have some like independent little theatre like crafty creators, we have some brands and businesses, so I'm just going to rattle through them. We have ABRSM, which is the Associated Board of the Royal School of Music, Addict Dance Academy, Amelia Stitches, yay Amelia, Arts One Sixth Form, Blaze George Elliott Candles, Theatre of Fragrance, ooh! Box Office Radio, Sounds of Stage and Screen, Broadway Boogie, Kappa College, Concord Theatricals, Disney on Stage, Dragged Out, interesting, From Within Productions, Gaiety Musical Theatre Festival, Guildhall School of Music and Drama, Handmade Broadway, that sounds like another crafty creator I'm not familiar with, Lee Greenaway Art, MX Masterclass, Musical Theatre Fitness, I may need that after this weekend, Musical Theatre Pins, Musicals Magazine, that's a new thing launching very recently, Neurotour Physiotherapy, interesting. Again, you may need that after Lauren Drew's workshop. Noda, be inspired by amateur theatre, yay for Noda. Official London Theatre, the Olivier Awards, Performance Preparation Academy, PPA, Peter Hanna Art, I've seen some of this stuff, very exciting. Pros from the shows, Ray Vox, Redbridge Drama and Dance College, Rock the Dragon, Royally Retro, Scrunchies for Theatre, Show Score, my pals, Silent Disco Walking Tours, Sing Easy West End, the Society of London Theatre, Spinning Rock Productions, Stagecoach Performing Arts, Ticketus, TKTS, The Dang, a Solange Erdang Collective, The Little Theatre Shop, The New York Academy for Dramatic Arts, The Performer Planner, The Playhouse Art Shop, Theatreshop.com, Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance, Vanity Studios, Letters to July, and Theatre and Threads. My God. So if you weren't already, there is just so much to be excited for at MusicalCon. I am so hyped that I am going. Like I said, make sure you come and say, oh my god, hey to me. If you see me there, I will be making a vlog content. You can be in it if you want to. I want to chat to the musical theatre fans who are coming this weekend. I kind of want to see everything. I want to go around and see all of these little things. I want to see all the Dear Evan Hansen fans meeting up, but I want to hug them all and offer tissues. I want to see the people doing these cool dance workshops. I want to see all these stage performances. I want to see people getting to meet their faves. I'm just so thrilled it's going to be happening. I think there is a capacity for so much joy and wonderfulness after this period of closure that we have had recently in the theatre. I think it's great for this to be this huge celebration of everything opening back up and how much musical theatre means to so many of us. Gosh, thank you if you made it all the way through that video. I want to share with you some of the exciting things that are going to be happening and sharing with you why I am so thrilled about this. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for lots more stagey content from me very regularly. If you really enjoyed, you can use the super thanks button down below to give me a little tip that would really help me as a stagey content creator or you can go to patreon.com forward slash Mickey Joe Theatre. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>